All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming clear. Let me know, please, if you have any problem from your side. Uh, today we are earlier. I said to myself, let me start early because those who live in Europe they stay really late just to join us. And as long today is a weekend, so why not? We can start earlier. And maybe in the weekend we will change the time, make it like now, you know, because people they are home anyway. If they are not going out. Anyway, uh, uh, today our topic is about uh, suicide. I choose this picture in front of us because uh, somehow it means a lot. You know, a human being, he go through a lot of things, sometimes horrible things. Every one of us have different experience in life. Everyone, he have his own shares. Everyone, he did good, he did bad, and he have his own mistakes. And sometimes small mistakes can cost you a lot. But this picture, it's kind of uh, inspiring, regardless of being homeless, because this is not what make me like this picture, actually. This man, obviously, he is not having a good life. But yet, if you look at his face, he is having a good life. And he is not seeking to commit suicide. A person who is begging for money in the street to buy a sandwich, I mean, what he have? Nothing. But yet, he is not thinking for a second or for a thought to commit suicide. That's mean that this man is more stable than many people who are lucky in life. You know, I heard yesterday about uh, a very famous cook. I'm not sure what his uh, nationality. I think maybe he's an American. I'm not sure. Who committed suicide? A person who is very famous, doing great, a lot of money, nice life. Why you want to commit suicide? Why a human being? When he get what he want, he feel like he don't need it no more. You know, human being like a child. When you are a child, you cry to get a Barbie, a toy. Then you get the Barbie or the toy, you play with it for five minutes, and then you throw it away. And this is how life for many people who they are getting everything. This homeless. Yes, he is home, homeless. But he is more stable there than more than many of people who they have mental issues who they are thinking of committing suicide. Today, our topic is not about a person or a normal person, it's about Muhammad, who claimed the Muslims they claim that he is a prophet of God. Maybe many of you, maybe some, maybe few, may maybe knows that Muhammad he tried many times to commit suicide. You know, when a person, according to science, I'm not a doctor, I don't claim to be one, according to science, that there is reasons for people to commit suicide, and all of it, it's about, uh, you know, a situation you live in, stress, mental issue, all of them, they will lead, will lead you to a mental issue. I mean, the second you make a decision to end your life, that's mean you reach a point of madness which cannot be controlled. Always we hear the Muslims saying that Jesus committed suicide. That's very funny and very stupid because Jesus did not kill himself. You see, to kill by to kill yourself is to commit suicide. If you say to me because he knows that they will kill him, he did not run away, that's because he's not a coward. And he don't fear death. But he did not kill himself. That is a false, far away from the truth statement. So when Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, he commits suicide or tried to commit suicide, then we need to find an explanation. Today I heard the news 
and actually this is why I thought about uh, doing this topic today that a French Muslim he threw himself from the top of the Kaaba or let us say the building next to the Kaaba and he killed himself why this person he you know he chose to do such an act in there I mean he went all the way to Mecca buy an airplane ticket paying for hotel for visa traveling and it's very hard very costly and then to throw yourself from the top of a building why you don't do it in France what was the reason really behind this what this man trying to say I mean I, I don't think he just committed suicide I think he was delivering a statement in case you do not know Islam forbid Muslims from committing suicide unless they want to kill the infidels so a Muslim he want to kill himself just to kill himself this is forbidden he will go to hell according to Islam so when a Muslim he kill himself and he knew Islam teach that if you kill yourself but not for the reason to kill Christians and Jews and Hindus and Buddhas and atheists if you kill yourself only just to kill yourself you are out of Islam you are uh, a kafir you are a person who will be tortured in hell then why he did it somebody's saying I th he think he was pushed we don't know this, this is what they are saying so we have to go by what, what, what you know they are saying I think I think he commits suicide because there is cameras you know and the after what happened many years ago in Mecca when a group of Muslims tried to take over the Kaaba and a guy he claimed that he is the Mahdi uh, they installed thousands of cameras to watch every move for security because uh, you know the royal family are very scared of what's happening inside Mecca especially inside the Kaaba territory where all the terrorists they meet and they discuss how to do things around the world it's like a, a conference place and nobody can watch them because you know it's a very crowded place people coming from around the world sharing ideas terrorist uh, not, not I'm not saying everyone in there is a terrorist but I mean it's a place where they met Pakistan India Bangladesh Afghanistan Syria Iraq uh, Saudi Arabia you name it I mean you meet all people and you will notice that all those people uh, as an example uh, Hassan al-Banna the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood his success was by his journey to Mecca and what happened there was a fight between the Shia and the Sunni in Mecca the Shia and the Sunni A person came to Hassan al-Banna and he told him did you hear they are fighting there Shia and Sunni so Hassan al-Banna he went to that location and he made a speech on both Shia and Sunni the Shia liked what he says as a Sunni because he did not say anything bad about the Shia he said the only problem of the Shia that they like the family of the Prophet more than anyone other is that a problem the Sunni they could not answer the Shia they love it and then he was sponsored by the mullahs of Iran which later they became the government of Iran and the first headquarter of the Muslim Brotherhood was bought by the terrorist mullahs of Iran they are really the founders yes he is the one let us say the name but the money is an Iranian Shia money and I'm mentioning this story to tell you that this is a place where all you know you get the opportunity to meet all those who do the business of Islam so this man who committed suicide there he is a person who knows already that in Islam he is not allowed to do such a thing to commit suicide unless he is killing some Christians with him or some Jewish but in this case he did not kill any so why he's doing it so there, there is there is something hidden behind we do not know yet but maybe 
he is a person who hated his life as a Muslim and he cannot get rid of his life as a Muslim and he knew if he leave Islam they will kill him anyway so he decided to make a kind of movement maybe he would get the attention of the world that he don't want Islam and Islam made him kill himself if we go to the hadith which is speak about Muhammad please guys invite your friends share the link with everybody in your Facebook etc if we go in the hadith as we see here you will see that Muhammad after the death of a guy his name is Waraka and I believe strongly that this is the real father of Muhammad Waraka bin Nufal, if you have my book the deception of Allah and if you have volume number one and you have Quran and science you will see there I provide you a lot of reference about uh, who is the real father of Muhammad for sure the Muslim they don't believe in this uh, but obviously Waraka bin Nufal is the person who Muhammad always was with even when he was a child each time the people lose Muhammad they find him with Waraka so I have no doubt that Waraka is the real father of Muhammad the sister of Waraka she offered herself according to Muslims to the father of Muhammad when he was going to sleep with Amina as the Muslims claim and she offered him 100 camel in return or to sleep with her which means that make him a jigalo the father of Muhammad he said okay still I have to go and do Amina excuse my language and then I will come back to you and I will do you excuse my language when he went and he did Amina as the Muslims claim came back to the Waraka, Waraka ibn Nufal sister who offered him to pay him for the sake of sex she said I do not need you no more and that because Waraka is the one who sent this man to this this his, his sister to this man hoping that he will have her instead of having Amina and then we notice that everything in Muhammad life is involved Waraka Waraka is the one according to Muslims who was behind the marriage between Khadija and Muhammad even though there is some stories speak of Waraka sorry Khadija making her father drunk in order to make him agree to marry from Muhammad the story in front of us here is speaking about Muhammad beginning as a claim to be a prophet of God you will notice in the story that Muhammad supposedly he have no idea what's going on he saw an angel who squeezed him three times as we said in previous video in a very funny way and nobody no Muslim can explain to us why this angel keeps saying to him read and Muhammad keeps saying I cannot read yet the angel don't give up and keep squeezing him saying to him you read and Muhammad say I cannot read or I do not know how to read you know okay hold on I do not know how to read he squeeze him again now this is a question Muslims cannot answer it because the story here is very funny but I understand what Muhammad trying to do here it's a story fabricated by Muhammad trying to claim that he is the same as Jacob he is the same as Jacob this is the angel of God and he is struggling with him and then the story continue and the story by the way show a lot of ignorance and stupidity because how the angel say to Muhammad read if Muhammad cannot read and what the point of squeezing him three times keep saying to him read if he would not read anyway which is a proof a misunderstanding a miscommunication and that is impossible because God is the one who sent this angel and the God is the one who is speaking by the mouth of the angel so why Allah do not know that Muhammad cannot read anyway and what this is squeezing about then we continue down we saw we find that Khadija she took Muhammad to Waraka and Waraka supposedly according to Muslims he was a Christian 
person the fact he is not a Christian person he is from the Nasara Nasara is the same as Jehovah's Witnesses today very close who don't believe in what the Christians believe and this is actually the source of Islam Waraka was a son of paternal uncle ie her father brother who during the pre-islamic period become a Christian and he used to write in Arabic writing and used to write of the gospel in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write that is the Quran we do not know if uh, Sheikh Rohi is coming today Sheikh Rohi is uh, uh, we debated with him last Saturday he said he will come but I don't know I don't think really he will do it because I think too much bunches already I think he can sur he cannot survive it but anyway he's welcome to call us anytime he said he will come but I don't think so let us see uh, having a PhD from an Azure University doesn't make you a person can answer any question about Islam because it's not about degree you have it's about how stupid this cult is Uh, sorry, the book is in the front. Okay, sorry guys. I apologize. All right So this guy what I call as the Muslims claim by the way in the hadith it doesn't say that he was a Christian It says he was Nasara and just to let you know Not even a single Arab Christians call himself Nasara You cannot find one Arab Christian call himself Nasara we in the Middle East we call ourselves Me as an individual. I call myself Masihi Masihi have nothing to do with the word Nasara. Masihi is coming from the word Masih, which means Messiah, 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 Messiah. So Masihi is an individual who is a Christian. Christians in Arabic, Masihiyin. Nobody, not even a single person. We never heard of this word Nasara except from Islam. We don't even know what is Nasara is about. Just to type it for you in the screen, for those who want to try to see what Masihi mean or what how to write Masihi. This is what Christian mean in Arabic. I have nothing to do with Nasara. Masihi, from the name Masih, Masih, which mean Christ. Christ does not come with add without the letter a l in the beginning which means that christ so the first two letters is l which means that then messiah the reason el messiah does not come with without l like as an example here you will notice muhammad muhammad his name do not need l muhammad why because he's no one in arabic we call him nakara nakira which means anything, anyone. Al Masih is a specific person, and there is no other two, the same as God. And this is even in Islam. His name is not Masih, his name is Al Masih. Why? Because there is no two Masih. He is the same as God, he is one. There is one God, there is one Messiah. This is why you will not find one Muslim there to call himself or to call his son al Masih. If a Muslim do that, they will execute him immediately. Immediately. But you can call your son Muhammad, and you can you know, find tons of people. Their name is Muhammad. So the word Nasara, which Muhammad he came with, cannot be found in any Arab Christian's history. The reason for that that this cult was called Nasara by the true Christians they call them Nasara you know the if you go to the word Nazareth there's two kind of Nazareth there is a Christians who they are Nazareth and there's a Christians who they are or let's say a cult they are called Nazareth those are Jews 
who try to mix between Judaism and Christianity and somehow they have like they're very close to Jehovah's Witnesses but they have their own vision of Christ and Muhammad he took from them a lot of things as an example those Nasara because Jesus supposedly is the son of God for them then they said to themselves there is no way God will let his son to be on the cross so they said oh it mostly what happened uh, given false interpretation for, for some verses from the Bible that God he made someone look like Jesus yes this is the flesh of Jesus but this is not Jesus which mean God he made someone look like Jesus and Jesus was in heaven already and this is where Muhammad he got his Quran is speaking about how the Messiah not to be crucified because God he made someone appear to be the Messiah in the cross وقولهم إن قتلنا المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وما قتلوه وما صلبوه ولكن شبه لهم chapter 4 verse number 157 and we read the Muslim translation which I don't accept anyway but I'm using Muslim translation just to get Muhammad busted so Muslim will not say you are giving false translation they say we killed Christ Jesus the son of Mary the messenger of Allah but they killed him not nor crucified him but it was made to appear to them it was made to appear to them which means Allah made it to appear that this this is Jesus and this is exactly where Muhammad is coming from he is an Asara in the beginning of his life this guy he was an Asara this is why Muhammad in the beginning of his life he promised the Asara to go to heaven إن الذين آمنوا والذين هادوا والنصارى والصابئين ومن آمن بالله وباليوم الآخر وعمل صالحا فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون chapter 2 verse number 62 those who believe in the Quran which means the Muslims and those who follow the Jews which means the Jewish and those who follow the Christians and the, and the Christians and the Sabians and the, whoever believe in Allah in the last days do a rashness that there is no problem for them they will go to heaven this is in the beginning of Muhammad where Muhammad he was all of those Muhammad he is a Jew with, with a Jew he is a Christian with the, with the Nasara not the Christians us and he is you see here the word Christian is not exist in the Quran the word here is Nasara as we said just remember that and then Muhammad, additional to that, he add the Sabian. But the Sabian are people who worship stars. They have many gods. You know, they have like a spiritual stars, gods, and you know, there is creation. There is a there is God. The, their gods have ranks. You know, there is God who create gods, and there is God who create the human, and there is etc. So Muhammad even he added the Sabian. Because in the beginning, Muhammad was trying to convert anyone to believe in him. He, you know, he's willing to accept whatever you have. Just tell him you are a prophet. So with the Sabian, he's a Sabian. With the Nasara, he is a Nasara. With the Jews, he is a Jew. With the pagan Arab, he is a pagan Arab. He bowed down to the three daughters of Allah and he worshipped them. And he said, it's a, it's a must to, do, to ask them for intercession. The Arab, they kiss the black stone. He kiss the black stone. The Arab go around the Kaaba. He go around the Kaaba. You know? Actually, you know, Muhammad, uh, always people made fun of him because he, you know, he is kind of uh, Mr. Bean in his time. I'm not making fun of anyone, by the way, but I will show you what I mean. Please, guys, invite your friends. I don't know why we don't have many uh, every Saturday. Should I stop the doing Saturday program? Why we have only 153? I mean, if a, if a lady doing unboxing for lipstick, we will have 2,000. Come on. You will notice here in this verse as an example. In chapter 2, verse number 142. If you read this chapter, as usual, the Quran is a stupid book. It, it, it tells nothing. 
But the fact, the verse is very telling that Muhammad is a madman and he is a hypocrite. Muhammad, when he wanted to please the Jews, he was praying in the direction of Jerusalem. Then Muhammad, when he killed the Jews and he noticed that the Jews will not believe in him anyway, and that's it, he killed them all. I mean, who is who's left? It is time to change the direction of the prayer. So now he changed the direction of the Qibla. So his Qibla was Jerusalem. Qibla means direction, like you know, where you face, you face something. So his Qibla was direction of Jerusalem. Now he killed the Jews and the Jews don't like him and they will not accept him as a prophet and they got him busted So Muhammad he you know, he, he have no hope with the Jews no more. So Muhammad he changed the direction of the prayer from Jerusalem To uh, Mecca no problem. I am uh, okay. Hold on uh, guys uh, uh, Rohi is online all right, I will sign off Skype then. <coughs> Hold on, please. Please invite your guys, uh, everybody. We have Sheikh Rohi, he is online. Look like he came. That's strange. <coughs> okay, guys, what we will do then because we have Sheikh Rohi is coming, we want to keep the debate as a debate. So what I will do, I will stop this broadcast, all right? And I will create a new one. Give me just two minutes. So you, later, you guys, you can download the broadcast for the debate alone. You know what I mean? So we will make it like just a debate, not like because now we started like 30 minutes uh, earlier. So I will hang up here. Give me two minutes, three minutes, refresh the page, please, and come back, and we will have our debate with Sheikh Rohi. Already I logged in in Pell Talk. I will start the new broadcast. With, uh, uh, the title will be about uh, a debate between uh, Christian Prince and Sheikh Rohi. And uh, invite your friends. Let us have a good time together and see how the Muslims will be unable to answer as usual. Give me two minutes and refresh my page again, please and join us in the live debate. Thank you.